what's the what's sort of driving the the three dimensions of the practices, cross-cutting concepts, and disciplinary core ideas. Those are the three dimensions from the framework that the, uh, the National Research Council laid out based on the current research. So um, in addition to defining the really core disciplinary ideas that are the big ideas that uh, are important organizing concepts for each discipline, they also were able to identify eight science and engineering practices that are basically what sciences, scientists and engineers do in the lab or wherever they work. Um, so all these different things like asking questions and defining an engineering problem, something that needs to be solved. Uh, these are not only things that the people do in the real world, but that students can and should know how to do in a classroom and understand. Um, and then the cross-cutting concepts are ideas that cut across the different disciplines, things like patterns. You know, it's not necessarily discipline specific, but you're always going to want uh, the capability to be able to look for patterns in the world, look at cause and effect, look at um, scale and proportionality. And, and from the perspective of the, the sort of the recipient end, thinking about in terms of classroom instruction, for states that had traditionally had standards that were pretty heavy, usually content weighted, especially the practices give students sort of a place to hang that content, a, a context, a, a place for teachers to think about um, integrating science ideas into practical instruction and I think they also give, especially if you're someone like an elementary teacher who's responsible for multiple content areas, they allow you the opportunity to think about science and more easily contextualize it outside the traditional areas of science. And uh, the cross-cutting concepts I think are a great help in that respect as well because uh, the whole patterns idea, well, chemistry teachers look for patterns on the periodic table, biology teachers look for patterns of adaptations, but math teachers look for patterns all the time. And so there's no reason that the cross-cutting concepts can't, in fact, cross beyond just the boundaries of science. So one of the things about the three-dimensional nature of the framework that I like from an instructional standpoint is it tends to open doors rather than close them. Hmm. Yeah, the... the uh, the idea of the integration of those those three dimensions and uh, the the structure and the framework for those folks who have not seen it, um, my guess is most of the folks who, who are watching this, you know that that uh, I don't know if you call it just a, a chart or a framework, but you've got the the sort of the levels and how they're all integrated. Uh, I I love the idea of. Uh, what we call here at CTL, we call academic literacy, so speaking, uh, reading, writing, speaking, and listening as a scientist, and we want, we want students to do that in all the disciplines. Uh, but what I really, what I, one of the big takeaways that we, uh, that, I, that I saw from the document was some of the things that they were designed to address um, that I wrote down here was uh, the depth over the breadth, the, the engagement, and some of that is that real world stuff, and then that systematic organization of, of uh, sort of getting all of the things that the kids need uh, or uh, from K to 12.